let's uh, consider a roller coaster with a loop the loop so what we're going to do is we're having having a first a drop in the roller coaster and then we have a circular loop and we assume that the cards are starting at the drop with at zero speed. Now the question is how high must this first drop here be such that when the car is at the top of the loop the drivers are experiencing a brief moment of apparent weightlessness. That means apparent weightlessness means that the normal force very briefly goes to zero. Let's assume the radius of this loop is R. Now the first thing we need to figure out now is what is the speed required V at the location at the top such that the normal force is disappearing. This we can find by applying Newton's law. Let's draw a free body diagram for the top of the loop. I'm defining positive y going downwards. Why am I doing this? Because at the top of the loop we're doing circular motion and there is a centripetal acceleration towards the center of the circle. So what we're doing, we define the axis, the y-axis, in direction of the acceleration. And let's define the x-direction in the direction which we're moving. The roller coaster cart and the riders, the passengers, and the, it's just a dot in the center. And now we're drawing all the forces that are acting on the riders and the cart. We have acting the weight which is mg. If there is a normal force left over, it is also acting in the downward direction. The tracks are acting downward on the card, so a normal force. These are all the forces that are acting on it if we assume that there is no friction or frictions in the job. Next thing we do is we can sum over all forces in the y direction and that has to be the mass of the card times the acceleration in the y direction. And we know that the acceleration in the y direction is the speed at the top of the loop squared divided by the radius of the loop, centripetal acceleration. So, that means I have the weight mg in the positive direction plus any possible normal force equals m times v squared over r. For n equals zero, so the normal force is just disappearing, that gives the sensation of weightlessness. It is not weightless because the weight is still there, it's mg. We call this apparent weightlessness. From that it follows then that mg has to be m times v squared over r. I can factor, I can divide left and right by m and from that it follows then that g equals v squared over r and I can solve this then for v is then g times r and the square root of it. This is the speed that I need at the top of the loop such that the normal force is just disappearing. Now we have to figure out how high do we have to start here so that we achieve still that speed. For this we are using conservation of mechanical energy. We know that the 
initial kinetic energy plus the initial potential energy equals the final kinetic plus the final potential energy. If we can neglect any work done by friction, so we're neglecting friction right now, this is all we need. Otherwise you would still have work done on the card in the equation. Let me write this out. I have one half mv initial squared plus mg h initial equals one half mv final squared plus mg h final. Let's think carefully about whether we know all the uh, values for velocity and height. The initial velocity we want to start almost at rest. So the card is really not moving in the beginning before it goes into the drop. V initial equals zero. The initial height, that is h. That's what we're looking for. The final speed is supposed to be g times r. That is at the top of the loop. And what is the final height at that location? We are two times the radius above the bottom of the loop. So I can plug this now all in. What I get is I get m g h, the height of the first drop, equals one half m times g r, that is the square root of g r squared, plus m g times 2r. I can multiply left and right by 1 over m. I actually could have done this all a little bit earlier. What I get is g h equals 1 half g r plus 2 g r. So I can multiply left and right by 1 over g, and I right away get the result for the initial height. It is 1 half r plus 2 r, and that equals 2.5 times the radius of the loop. So if the card is starting at a height h of 2.5 times the radius of the loop, then it will just, when it reaches the top of the loop, have just enough speed to make it through. The normal force will, at this moment, for a brief moment, disappear.